Greenhouse warming theory is rapidly becoming the most expensive mistake ever made in the history of science. Video 10. Greenhouse warming theory is physically impossible. It is now clear to people with open minds that greenhouse warming theory is not only mistaken, it is not even physically possible. Greenhouse warming theory is based on three fundamental observations. First, atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases have been increasing at an ever-increasing rate since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution around 1750. This increase tracks known increases in burning of fossil fuels. Second, average global temperatures have generally been increasing over the same period, although the rate of increase in temperature has been much more irregular as described in video two. And third, greenhouse gases absorb some infrared thermal energy radiated by Earth, as first observed in the laboratory by John Tyndall in 1859. The observation that increases in greenhouse gases and increases in global temperatures are more or less contemporaneous is not proof of causation. Detailed studies in Antarctica, for example, suggest that concentrations of carbon dioxide sometimes increase as much as 400 years after increases in temperature. This suggests that a warming ocean absorbs less carbon dioxide, releasing more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Such release is predicted by the well-known curves of solubility of carbon dioxide in water, shown by the blue line. We all observe this relationship when our beer or soda drink loses its carbon dioxide fizz as it gets warmer. Beyond these observations, there are four primary assumptions made by most climate scientists that lead them to conclude that greenhouse warming theory must explain reality. The first assumption is that carbon dioxide absorbing some infrared thermal energy radiated by Earth must cause the atmosphere to get warmer. This key assumption has never been verified by experiment as explained in video seven. In fact, in 1900, Knud Angstrom, a well-known radiation physicist, showed in the laboratory and in the field that changes in concentrations of carbon dioxide do not seem to have any effect on air temperature above some minimum concentration. Furthermore, Angstrom measured that carbon dioxide absorbed less than 16% of the frequencies of oscillation radiated by Earth. Planck's empirical law shows that a body of matter must absorb 100% of the frequencies of oscillation radiated by Earth at the amplitudes of oscillation radiated by Earth to become as warm as Earth. We now know that carbon dioxide absorbs the infrared thermal energy into the bonds holding the molecules together. Temperature in air, on the other hand, is well known to be proportional to the average velocity of motion of all the gas molecules squared. Something very different. Converting bond energy to translational motion has never been observed to be an efficient process. Furthermore, the energy absorbed by each molecule of carbon dioxide must be shared with 2,500 molecules of the other gases making up air. The second assumption is that heat is a flux, an amount of thermal energy that flows each second across a surface measured in units of watts per square meter. This assumption is still made today by most physicists and climate scientists, even though Planck showed in 1900 that heat is a broad spectrum of frequencies of oscillation and that thermal energy at each frequency is equal to the frequency times the Planck constant. Thus, heat is a broad spectrum of energies that cannot be described accurately by a single number of watts per square meter. The third assumption is that heat is additive, the more heat flowing into a body, the hotter the body will become. Yet the hottest a body can become is the temperature of the source of the radiation. Absorbing an infinite amount of infrared energy radiated by Earth cannot make you warmer than Earth. Yet absorbing a small amount of ultraviolet energy radiated by sun causes sunburn. Energy is a function of frequency, not amount. The fourth assumption is that Earth will get hotter if Earth absorbs more thermal energy from Sun than it radiates back into space. 
This assumption was clearly stated by Joseph Fourier in 1822 and is central to greenhouse warming theory today, as shown in this figure, which implies that the global warming today is caused by a net absorption of 0.9 watts per square meter. Yet Planck's law again shows quite clearly that Earth can only get hotter by absorbing radiation from a hotter body, Sun, which contains higher amplitudes of oscillation at all frequencies of oscillation. Temperature is about the physical properties of the radiation absorbed, not the amount of some generic thing called radiation. Note in this figure on the right the downwelling radiation from greenhouse gases at 333 watts per square meter is more than twice the incoming solar radiation reaching Earth at 161 watts per square meter on the left. Come on, folks, that just does not make physical sense. We all know that air in the lower atmosphere is heated primarily by solar radiation heating Earth's surface. That is why temperatures are hotter during the day when the sun shines than at night when infrared radiation rising from Earth is dominant. These assumptions are all down in the details, though. If we simply step back and look at the overall flow of heat, we see several serious problems with greenhouse warming theory. Heat is what a body of matter absorbs to get hotter and loses to get colder. First, heat is well observed to flow from higher temperature to lower temperature, a reality enshrined in physics as the second law of thermodynamics. No exception is known. Temperature of air decreases with increasing elevation. This means that heat cannot flow from up in the atmosphere back to Earth, as shown in this diagram. You cannot get warm standing next to a cold stove. Secondly, greenhouse warming theory assumes that radiation from Earth, absorbed by greenhouse gases, in one way or another, warms Earth. But a body cannot be warmed by its own radiation. Heat cannot flow as radiation from one body to another body at the same temperature because the amount of heat that flows is clearly observed to be proportional to the difference in temperature. Think of two wood stoves at the same temperature. Radiation from one cannot make the other hotter. Thirdly, many climate scientists assume that greenhouse gases form a blanket around Earth that causes Earth to get warmer. Blankets are well known to slow cooling, but they cannot cause heating unless they are electric bringing thermal energy from elsewhere. The stratosphere acts as an electric blanket around Earth because it is heated by solar ultraviolet C radiation, dissociating oxygen and other air molecules, converting bond energy directly into velocity, which means temperature. The top of the stratosphere is observed to be approximately 36 degrees Celsius warmer than the bottom of the stratosphere. Fourthly, most climate scientists and most physicists assume that temperature is a function of amount of radiation absorbed, measured in watts per square meter. But again, Planck's empirical law shows clearly that temperature is a result of a very broad spectrum of frequencies of oscillation, where the amplitude of oscillation at each frequency of oscillation increases with temperature. Greenhouse warming theory is based on numerous assumptions that turn out not to be correct. Greenhouse warming theory is not only mistaken, it is not even physically possible. Thank you.